If you live somewhere where this is available in real life, let me know so I can be very disappointed. Because I don't get them here. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a first look, run, and review of the new FMS Jimny. And you're saying to yourself, what exactly is a Jimny? Is it some sort of character from an animated movie? No. It's one of these. It's this little guy right here. This is a Suzuki Jimny, and this is from FMS. FMS, uh, through Horizon Hobby, sent me this tiny little 12th scale model of the Suzuki Jimny. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I have to admit, I was pretty blown away when I saw this, and for a couple of reasons. It's an awesome looking hard body. It almost looks like a static model. That's how good this truck looks. From all angles, I might add. The front, the side, the back, the undercarriage. It really is truly a pretty amazing model and there's a lot of details added to this that you would not get in a Lexan body or for that matter in a lot of other hard bodies. Before we get too far into the actual truck itself, I should mention the other thing that I was a little bit surprised about and that's the packaging that this truck comes in. It comes in this cool Pelican style case and there's a little, you know, cardboard outer cover thing that kind of details some of the details of this truck, but this itself is a pretty neat carrying case, and uh, it's actually em emblazoned, embossed with the Suzuki Jimny logo on there. Uh, it actually, you know, opens like a regular everyday Pelican case. There's like a little tab on the top here. Open that up, and that's where your truck would be, which is pretty neat. Great carrying case. Uh, carries everything you need, really. Um, I'm not usually one to hang on to packaging or boxes, for that matter, but with this, I can see myself hanging on to that. That kind of makes a lot of sense. Very cool. All right, back to the truck itself, because that's really why we're here. This is not the scale box guild. This is a 1 12th scale Suzuki Jimny. Um, it's pretty accurate to the real deal. I don't get these in North America, uh, which is a real disappointment because this is a pretty amazing vehicle. We rented a Suzuki Jimny when we were in Costa Rica. And let me tell you, there are a lot of washed out roads on the way to the place that we were staying at. And it was pretty handy to have a little 4x4 just like this one. Uh, it's got a 187 millimeter wheelbase, um, 16 millimeters of ground clearance. So it's not going to be a rock crawler by any means, but it will be a really excellent trail truck. Uh, and I think it's going to look amazing in video, if I'm honest, just because of the amount of detail in this crazy good hard body. Uh, there really isn't a bad angle for the Jimny, in my opinion. It's almost like it's like an everyday man's G-Wagon. It's kind of got those kind of proportions, and I, I really, really like it. I, I've always been a fan of the Jimny. Uh, full interior, all the doors open, the hood opens, and there's actually, even on this model, there is an engine. A little tiny molded engine there to cover up some of the more electronic details, but enough to kind of give you the idea of what's going on there, which is pretty neat. Um, the grill, instead of a sticker, this is all real mesh, as you can see there. You can see my fingers. Um, really detailed light kit, uh, wipers, mirrors, full interior. Let's go and take a look at some of the back details here. Uh, metal emblems, metal hinges. This rear brake light, this lights up. They really did an amazing job. Look at the wheels and tires. There's even a fake brake disc in there that spins with the wheel and the caliper stays put, which is always a nice touch. Um, it's actually pretty realistic too. It's got front and rear radius arms, uh, scale axles, um, coils, and shocks, just like the real deal. And look at this really detailed undercarriage. It's got everything there. Um, it's pretty amazing. They really went all out with the details on this. Even down to the stock Dunlop tires. They're really, this is like as scale accurate a model as you can get, in my opinion. It's pretty amazing. Let's take a look at that full interior by going through the back. They do take a little bit more force to get into and out of. I, in fact, I don't have the fingernails to get into the side doors, so I have to kind of push at them from 
inside for now, which is sort of annoying, but it is what it is. Mm, there we go. Um, you can see there is a wire that goes in there, and that's for that brake light, which is pretty cool. Even the glass has the uh, ice melting uh, lines in it. It's pretty crazy detailed. This interior is modular, so you can actually pull the seats up if you want. There's a whole, like, extra section for storage underneath here. Like, it's as accurate to the real deal as it possibly could get. I like having them in the down position, offer a little bit more storage capacity. Seats that telescope backwards and forwards, it's pretty crazy. The driver, he's not included. Uh, that is a Stan Lee six inch driver and for 12th scale, six inches is about accurate. That'd be about a six foot tall man. Uh, he fit in there with a tiny bit of surgery. He's missing the <laughs> shin and foot, uh, but you'd never know when the door is closed. It does offer a pretty decent amount of room for a driver and uh, it, you know, for something like this, I think you just need to have a driver in there. What is it that Stan Lee said? With great power comes great responsibility. I'm sure he feels that way about this truck and FMS in general. If this is what they can offer, hopefully they live up to the responsibility and offer more down the road. It's the best way I could tie in that character. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you know, the mirrors tilt in, there's actual glass behind them too, so they are reflective, which is pretty neat. Um, wipers, um, there is an antenna on the top here, and nice detail about this antenna is that it is rubberized, so you won't break it off when you roll the truck over, inevitably. Like all of FMS's models lately, there is a really nice light kit included. This one has a few different modes. There's your daytime sort of, I guess, headlights, then you've got a high beam, then you've got sort of a, I don't know, this sort of be like a caution or warning system where all the blinkers are flashing and you've got your lower uh, fog lamps on as well. Then there's another one where it's just fog lamps and then off. So all in all, many different functions. If we go through this again, you will see that the turn signals are a thing that still exist here. Um, I don't know if there's a mode that changes having them on or off. There's got to be a way to do it, something I will definitely investigate. It always seems to confound me. There should be a way to turn those off, but I haven't found it yet. On the back, uh, you will see here reverse lights as well, which is pretty neat. I like that a lot. Uh, let's go back into this mode. That's sort of your DRL mode. and. Should be brake lights, yep, exactly. Same with reverse there. So really nicely full function light kit. I think that alone is one of the best selling features. One thing that you probably didn't know about this model that I was pretty surprised about, that the steering wheel turns with the wheels. And I'm not sure if you can see that or not. We'll see if we can get a close up on that. There we go, yep. Very, very cool. I think that is a pretty neat feature. Something I haven't seen at this scale and something you don't actually see in many scales, if I'm honest. So that is a pretty nice little bonus feature. The transmitter is fine. It's not amazing, but it is pretty decent. It's got a good solid weight to it. Uh, the plastic wheel isn't the best, but all the things you need are on there and the ability to adjust everything from the radio just like the uh, 18th scale. So if you have any questions about how to set it up, uh, I go over some of the details in that video, which I will link right up here. Now that we've talked about most of the exterior details and how this truck looks as it comes out of the box, which is pretty spectacular if you ask me, let's talk a little bit about some of the features of the chassis. Uh, it is a, a metal construction chassis, a ladder frame chassis, just like you might expect in the full size truck. Uh, it uh, goes the full length of the chassis, of course. Great looking scale pumpkins on these axles, which I think really look amazing. It is all plastic, uh, but you know, at this scale, I'm willing to forgive that. There are metal drive shafts, which is a nice touch. Uh, your steering servos on the proper side, which is really awesome for uh, you know, a left-hand drive anyway. Everything is hidden. You don't see much of the electronics anywhere. There is a steering servo up front here. There is also a second 
servo for the shifting transmission. So you get a first gear and a second gear. Of course, the second gear is a little bit taller. You do lose a ton of torque in that second gear. So it's really only going to be good on the trails. Uh, I found it did not really hook up very well. As soon as it got any sort of obstacle in its way, it just kind of bottomed right out. Couldn't really deal with it in second gear. So first gear, your crawling gear is definitely going to be the one you're probably going to be using the most. Not a ton of speed out of this vehicle. That's of course first gear. Second gear obviously does give you a ton more speed and a decent drag brake too. Like I said though, you aren't going to get a ton of torque in that second gear, so uh, performance is definitely going to suffer in an off-road sort of situation. Nice strong steering servo though, uh, plenty of throw on that. Uh, I will say though that this engine does feel significantly underpowered for the size and weight of the vehicle. So not a ton of speed or torque available at any time in any gear. So that's something I would love to see an upgrade for. And in fact, uh, I'm going to see if a Furitech brushless system will fit in this truck at some point in the future, because I do feel that it could use uh, a little help there. Um, yeah. Based on the wheel and hub system, I think you are going to be locked into their specific wheel and tire combination. Uh, it's going to require some clever thinking to find something that's going to fit, I believe, because that is a pretty specific wheel and tire combo uh, with a very specific hub. It is a pin hub on the back, um, which mates up with the axle shaft, which looks pretty narrow. Um, but there is no way that I can see of getting an aftermarket wheel and tire on there unless they make it specifically to this sort of design. Um, and it's not exactly easy to get them on and off either. It would have been nice to see something a little more standard in that regard, so we did have some options. FMS did go for absolute realism here, so unfortunately that's a setback that I think we're going to have to live with. But it is a pretty nice looking combo. Are you willing to compromise on performance to gain a lot in the scale accuracy department? Are looks of the vehicle just as or more important to you than the actual driving dynamics? Let me know in the comments down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you're enjoying this video, hit the like button. If you don't enjoy it, hit the dislike button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Overall, I think FMS did an amazing job on this vehicle. I like that they made it 12 scale, so a lot of those six inch drivers are gonna fit just fine. The turning steering wheel and the scale accuracy of the vehicle overall make it a real winner in my book. I like that it's small. I'd like to thank FMS and Horizon Hobby for sending this along so I could do this miniature review, because it is a small truck. Uh, I think it's got some potential for sure. Uh, it just needs a better motor. I think straight out of the box, that's the biggest upgrade that I could see myself making in this uh, in this vehicle. Uh, I'd also love to see a more universal style of axle so we could fit different wheels and tires on there. Something that could be, uh, you know, upgraded beyond this factory all-terrain tire. I just don't think that that's going to be enough performance for most people. Uh, but looks-wise, you really can't beat it. I, I honestly, I thought that Land Cruiser that they did uh, in 18th scale was pretty darn amazing. This takes the cake. It is really spectacular. I love all the work that went into making this truck. And I hope that FMS continues down this road and takes some of my suggestions seriously in their next iteration, whatever it might be. The 300 milliamp hour LiPo battery that is included with this truck does offer a pretty decent runtime. I was pretty surprised uh, at how long that lasted. And uh, I think it probably has to do with the amount of reduction that's built into the transmission. All in all, I am pretty impressed with the FMS 112 scale Suzuki Jimny. I love that it's a licensed product too. Seeing the actual badges makes for a really rewarding experience because you know that they actually took the time to make the vehicle look right. So to have all those features, have all this scale accuracy, 
have all this weight and gorgeous interior. It's almost like it's a static model that's been sort of upsized and RC-ified. And that's pretty cool. Uh, I really like it. I think it's a lot of fun. Is it a rock crawler? No. Does everything need to be? No, of course not. A good trail truck puts as big a smile on my face as a good crawler. So get out there, enjoy the hobby, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the trails. I think that's going to do it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>